Automating browsers and Excel with Microsoft Power Automate for desktop is straight forward. In today's case, we want to navigate to the Danish National Bank and get their exchange rates. We want the US dollar and the corresponding date so that we can write it back to Microsoft Excel. My name is Anders Jensen. Let's learn some Power Automate desktop. What I first want to do is to download the Excel book. Navigate to the course page. The link is in the video description below. Click to download the Excel book. Click the three dots here and then click download. This will download the course data. Now go to your desktop, then right click and create a project folder. So right click new folder and here I will call mine currency RPA like this. Now move the downloaded Excel book to the currency RPA. And double click to open it and it's placed in here. The data is fairly simple. We want to navigate to the one US dollars. Here you can see we have a little table. We want to get the rate and the corresponding date. And we want to get it from the Danish National Bank and then write it to this Excel book. Let's see how it's done. So I'll close down this Excel book again. What I want to do first is that I want to grab the path of this newly created folder that we just did. So press shift on your keyboard and then right click with your mouse. You should be able to see a copy as path like that. Now the path to this folder is in your clipboard. Now navigate to Power Automate for desktop and I've created a new flow here. It's very empty. So let's start by creating a variable that will hold the project path. Search for a set variable in actions, and drag it in. The variable needs to have a name. Per default, it's named new var, but let's have a more descriptive name. So I'll say project path like this. And these percentage signs in the start and end, that's because it's a variable. When I click away, they disappear. And when I click in here, you can see them. We can refer to this name by later on using these percentage signs. We will see that. So now we give it a value. Here I press Control V, that will paste in my path. It's important that you delete these double quotation marks like this. So it's only the path here. The clever thing is that we can now refer to this project part, this name, and then get this value on. That is handy if we want to use this address multiple times in the flow. And it will also make your robot building more robust because imagine that we move this project folder, then we only need to update it here. Let's see it in action because we want to initialize our Excel workbook. So first I find a launch Excel and drag it in. Here I can launch Excel with a blank document or I can click this drop down over here and open the following document. Now we will open up our Excel book and we will use this project path that we just created. And as I told you, you can refer to a variable by pressing in a, pro a percentage sign and say project path and then a percentage signs in the end. This will use the project path. But let me show you a nice trick. So I delete this. If you click this little X out here, you can find the project path here in variables. You can either mark it and then click select or simply double click it. That will put it in automatically and you don't risk to misspell the name. But since this was the project path and that was the path of the main folder called currency RPA, we also need this currency data.xlsx. So I mark this, copy it and go back here make a backward slash and then control V and paste in the name of the book. Make instance visible. We rarely want to do that. That is just if you want to see the calculations in Excel as the robot works, we disable that. Open as read only. No, not because we want to write data back to this Excel book. Finally, scroll down. Here you can see variables produced and a variable called Excel instance is being produced. 
we can refer to this variable and that will get us this Excel instance with this book. So click save. One thing that's very important in Power Automate for desktop is to close the Excel instance again. Otherwise it will lock. So I find a close Excel and drag it in. Here you can see that I'm referring to the Excel instance by this variable. It did it automatically. Before closing Excel, I can click this drop down and here you can see I can choose to not save document, save document or save document as if I want to give it a different name. I just want to save and then I click save. So for now, we actually have created our robot. It doesn't do anything. It just launches the Excel and closes it again. But we can actually run it to test that everything is right. That is launching and closing Excel. So nothing happened, but the robot works. Let's make sure that we're using the right sheet. So let me go back to the Excel book and open it. Here you can see we want to work in the one dot US dollars sheet. So go down here, right click, rename, control C to copy this name. Now you can close it and go back to Power Automate for desktop. Here you want to search for a set active Excel worksheet action. So set active, there it is, and drag it in between the launch and the close. Here I'm again referring to the Excel instance. I can activate a worksheet with a name or an index. We choose name. And down in the worksheet name, you simply just press Control V. That is our worksheet name that we want to work at. If we don't do this setting the active Excel worksheet, then Power Automate for desktop will just take the last one used. And this is not very robust. Imagine that we have a different sheet open last time. So we're specifying it here to make complete sure that our robot reads from here. And then I click save. Now we can create the web part. So if I go to my browser and you should navigate to the nationalbank.dk slash forward slash en. And then if I click enter here, that will take me to this page. The link is also here in the description. It says navigate to nationalbank.dk en. So this one takes me to here and let me just maximize it so we can see what's going on. But this is the Danish National Bank. And what I want to do is to click this button called more currencies that will get me to this page. You can argue that you can use this URL to get here directly, but we want to practice our clicking as well. Then I want to get the current US dollar rate. That one is this one here. And then I want to get the corresponding date from up here. So when you watch the video, this, vi this date will be later in the future. Let's create it in Power Automate for desktop. It's very, very easy. So if I just move one page back, this is the page I want to open. So I need this address from up here. And again, you can find it in the course description, but I copy it from here. Then I go back to Power Automate for desktop. We want to open up a browser instance. And if I search for launch new, then you can see I can choose between four different browsers. We will use Chrome today, but you can find use Firefox and Edge, just as you promised me to not use Internet Explorer. It is not getting updated anymore and it's very unreliable. But I choose Chrome, so I drag it in after the set active Excel worksheet. Here I want to launch a new instance. And I can also specify the URL. So if I go down here and just paste in my copied URL by clicking Control V, this will produce a variable called browser. And again, I can refer to this variable wherever I want to automate in this browser window. If this web page address changed a lot, we could also create a variable for that in set variable and then use that variable here. But for now, we will use the hard coded approach and click save. Again, you can test the robot simply just by pressing run up here. That will launch Excel, set the active Excel worksheet and open up a new browser. Finally, we will close the Excel. And if you see here, you can see I have opened up a page. That is just a new instance of this web page. Now we want to click more currencies. 
To do that, I go back here and then I find a click link on web page in actions. That one is here. So drag it in directly after the launch new Chrome. Here we work in the browser instance and we want to create a UI element. So I can click here and then click add UI element. I want to find the UI element and that is this more currencies. You can see that it's called anchor. So I press control on my keyboard, then left click with my mouse and my UI element gets created. I want to left click, that is fine. And then I click save. Again, we can test it. So if I just closed down this newly opened window to see that it actually works. Now click run and the flow will run again. And here we have added in another step as we have now moved to the exchange rates. Now we just need to grab these two things and write it back to Excel. Before we do that, let me just show you one cool thing because we created a UI element here and you can actually inspect that by going up here to these stack of papers like that. And here it is. You can see that is inside a web page and the anchor and the name is called anchor more currencies. I really want to rename this so it's easier to refer to in the future. If I want to update this flow, that is also best practice. So either click F2 here while you have clicked it or right click, click rename. I will just use the more currency name for this. So I will delete this last part here and the first part and click enter. We can inspect the UI element by double clicking it. That will take us to this selector. Luckily, Power Automate Desktop create this automatically for us. But this is the selector down here that it uses. It's also a place we go when wherever we want to fine tune it. But Power Automate for Desktop is so powerful that you usually don't have to. So just click cancel. Now you know it's there. We want to scrape the data. So go over to actions again and then find a extract data from web page like this and then drag it in after the click link on web page. Here you need to open up a web page with the data you want to scrape. So I'm going to do that. That will open up this live web helper. Again, you can see these red borders. That is where we want to scrape. Since I want to first get the date, I move up to the first date here. And then I, you can see I can either choose span or th. I'll choose the span in here. So if you move the mouse a little, that will toggle between them. I will choose the span. So what I want to do now is that I right click, extract element value, and then pick the text here. You can see it says the 16th of September 2022, but this will actually work whatever date it is because it used the attribute of the element. If I click here, you can see that we have created it over here and I can click finish. Like this, the variables produced. Since this is the currency date, I will rename this. So I click in here. It doesn't matter whether or not you override the percentage sign, Power Automate for desktop will automatically add them. So I'll just say currency date and then click enter. Now we are saving this data into this variable. So we can refer to this variable whenever we want to get the data in it. I click save. Let's write it out to Excel. And let's just open up the Excel sheet to see where we want to write. I want to write in the C2 cell. So go, let me go back to here. So I find a write to Excel worksheet here and drag it in. The Excel instance that is still the Excel instance that we created. Value to write. Well, we just created a variable for that called currency rate. So you can click the X and then double click the currency rate to use that. The write mode. We can write on a specified cell. That is the one we're using, but we can actually also use the current active cell. Usually you want to specify a cell because that is more reliable. So the column, well, that was the C column. So I just write in C here, the row that was two. So I just do this and then click save. This is my currency date. 
let's also fill in the US dollar rate and we do it exact same way that we did here. So find a extract data from web page like this and drag it in after the right to Excel worksheet. Again, you need to open up your browser. So we do that. This time we will get the US dollar. So hover your mouse over then right click extract element value and get the currency here. Today it's 747.1. I click finish over here and now we start it. If we don't do nothing, it will store in a variable called data from web page. I want to store it in a more describing name, also a best practice to also use to always use names that is describing your data. Mine is called USD rate, so I just click save. Similarly, I can write to the Excel worksheet. We can actually, if I right click here, I can click copy. Then I move my mouse down to the close Excel, just click once here. I then right click, paste, and now we have pasted in this action. We need to modify it a bit. So if I double click it. So here, I don't want to use the currency date. So I want to use the US dollar rate here. And I just need to change the column to D. The row is the same. And then I click save. Now we can test our flow because it's finished. So close down your Excel sheet like this and then click run. So this will take us to the entire process and congratulations, you have built your first robot in a few seconds. You can see the steps moving over to the left and we are done. Let's inspect the data by going into our book. So I open it. There you go. You have now got the data from the web page into Excel. If you want a full solution that's actually use these currencies in accounting and there's a magic solution for you waiting, then click the video up here in the corner that will take you to the full tutorial on how to automate currency data for accounting.